Waste is very much the same all around the world. In today's consumer society, we continue to create new mountains of unnecessary, redundant items, many of them used only once. They accumulate in large waste dumps and beg the question, what now? What next? Film Studio KB5 presents The problem of waste can no longer be ignored and hidden away under nature's carpet of green, as has been the way of handling it in the past. Waste and refuse are like our children who disobey and do not heed our word, and as such we have to deal with them. Waste and refuse, the unwanted children. The expression unwanted children is perhaps a little strong. We push waste ahead of us into the 20th century as just one of the many difficulties that civilization faces in the next millennium. Today we know how that the best solution is not to produce refuse at all, or to make use of refuse in some way. We should not make out, however, that we have only just come to this conclusion. Old cinema newsreels showed us, with a touch of humor, that these two solutions are the best. The best solution, no waste. After such a good breakfast, the Parisian daily press, full of juicy news and tittle-tattle, tastes delicious. And what about a nice snack, bus tickets? The most sensible solution is to recycle. We put them into the machine, which cuts them and gives them a more useful appearance, and turns them into kitchen utensils. Here we are cutting German helmets. It never occurred to Hitler to do this, but he would have been better off if he had specialized from the very beginning in strainers and colanders, instead of making military helmets. But now it is 50 years later, and in this time we have, with the overproduction of refuse, started to wage as dangerous a war on the natural world. Only in the mountains has Slovakia got totally clean waterfalls and tarns. This is the only place where the environment is fully out of danger, because the people who come here care about it and for it. These areas can be guarded against those who would damage and destroy it. The behavior of all of us in national parks and other protected areas is governed by laws and a strict environmental code, which all must follow. Unfortunately, below these areas, nothing is considered sacrosanct by man, neither nature nor the law. In Slovakia, there is a saying, out of sight, out of mind. This cannot be applied to nature. Untended rubbish dumps, the rotting wounds of the countryside which sting because we pour litter and waste into them in a ruthless, inconsiderate way which can hardly be comprehended. People throw away their waste and set fire to their own unwanted children. And down in the lowlands, in the broad river valleys, people behave as though they had completely lost their conscience. They rely entirely on the self-regulating capacity of rivers to retain their purity. Or do they think that no one will see the waste that they throw away? Perhaps people act like this because they have no other possibility. Maybe they are not aware of the fact that at present we have at our disposal three types of environmentally safe waste management. Up to now, the most common way of dealing with waste has been the creation of waste dumps. Dumping. The town of Trenčín produces 56,000 metric tons of all kinds of waste each year. The town's household refuse makes up one third of total waste production. Where can we put such a large amount of waste? Near a canal leading from the river Vach, we see a smoke signal coming from the old community waste dump in the background. Although this dump pollutes the Vach less than all the other waste producers in the immediate area, it still has to pay fines as a result of its environmental efficiency. 
so this waste tip is not the answer to Trenchin's problems. Old waste rots here under these cottages and flower beds. It still produces heat, and so the gardeners can be proud of their early crops. But they hide the fact that the accumulated biogas rattles in their cellars from time to time. Not far from the old dump, more new waste tips are appearing all the time. And they do not promise to be a gardener's paradise. Instead, they promise just a heap of problems. Although waste is weighed and registered properly, as this is a planned and managed dump, this does little to increase its environmental safety. Municipal waste is already being transported to a new place. However, this half-metre thick layer of clay and earth is still not satisfactory, as the safest foundation for the waste tip is impermeable foil. The town has no choice other than to look for another location, which would be suitable for of a new dump incorporating all the elements of advanced waste dump management technology. Given the size of this investment, Trenchin decided to look for a foreign partner whose capital and know-how it could use to found a new waste disposal company. The question remained, however, where should such an advanced modern dump be placed? Research showed that conditions in and around this village would be suitable for a future dump, taking into account criteria such as the initial piling up of the waste itself and the subsequent use of biogas for heat and electricity production. The average operational lifetime of a tip has been calculated at 21 years. The thistles in this valley beyond the woods sting us, as if to remind us that the land here is indeed fertile. We are now a little further north in Slovakia, in the heart of the Orava region. In order to get rid of all the untended, unofficial waste dumps that exist in the Orava area, the councillors of all the region's villages have put their heads and their money together. Part of the area, they are extending and reconstructing an old dump so that it does not have any adverse effects on the Orava countryside. The new dump will be legal and not as invasive as the others, and it will cater for the waste disposal needs of the whole Orava region. The capital, Dolny Kubin, along with its nearby villages, produces 18,200 metric tons of waste every year. But what is this amount when compared to this metallurgical factory, which produces tremendously large waste emissions and interferes with the municipal tip too? The factory has created something resembling a lunar landscape from its own waste, right on top of the municipal dump. This ghostly landscape reminds us that industry too is a producer of refuse. This is bad for the countryside when the two types of waste mix together, and it's even worse when it rains. Unpleasant and contaminated liquid leaks out of the dump. To have such a neighbour is not a welcome state of affairs for an area such as Orava, which has lofty ecological aspirations. For this reason, the water that leaks from the factory to the community dump is continuously monitored, so that the municipal dump does not have to carry the blame for any pollution. If it wasn't for this unhappy neighbour, the new waste dump would be in an ideal position. The hollow is surrounded on two sides by woods, the original earth has been removed and will be replaced when the dump is full. Neither the sides nor the bottom of the pit have to be lined with expensive foil because the impermeable clay layer underneath does the job equally well. Waste is not being taken to the old tip anymore. The new waste is being put onto the regulated layer. After the mess is finished, the dump will operate for around 12 years. After that, it will disappear without trace into the ground after it has been covered by the original soil and vegetation. Unfortunately, all types of waste are heaped onto one single pile. If the waste was sorted and separated, however, the working life and capacity of the dump would be extended. In a completely different part of Slovakia, we find a very high standard dump. It is actually the first dump of its kind in the country. It's ecologically efficient and it relieves the strain on the countryside of the Tatras region. Nothing has been overlooked. 
A channel prevents water from getting into the body of the dump, but it hasn't always been like this. This archive footage is of Veterna Poruba three years ago. Waste and refuse was brought here from all over the district without any regard for the local natural environment. A small stream flowed freely through the tip, rainwater became contaminated, temperatures recorded in the middle of the dump in that an explosion was possible, and on top of that, there was the danger of landslides. For these reasons, the dump was closed. Where can we go from here? Next to the old tip, there is now a permanent solid waste dump. So that the mistakes of the past can be corrected, waste from the old tip is being moved to this new site. This new dump has not yet been completed, and this allows us to see part of it in cross-section. First of all, we can see that it has been isolated from the underlying substrate. At the very bottom, there is a gravel layer with a layer of clay. On top of that, there is a layer of high-quality black foil. This is protected by a geotextile coating. If the foil wasn't protected, the next layer of gravel could possibly pierce it. Thanks to these measures, the tip's foundation is fully impermeable. The dump is no longer at risk from rainwater either. It flows safely down through the dump into drain pipes. The rainwater also cools the refuse in the tip, and indeed it is pumped up to the top again to cool it in a repeating cycle. This dump will contribute to the well-being of nature, and not just in this small part of Slovakia. Nature, unlike humans, has no frontiers. But with this view, we can see that we have, even so, gone beyond at least one border. Windmills in Holland tell us this, and they also take us to a place with a more progressive waste management philosophy. The state-owned VAM company has a prominent position in waste management in the Netherlands, and its waste dump in Weister is the biggest one in the country. Such piles of waste may create the impression that waste dumping is the foremost method of refuse management in this country. The VAM dump is still under construction, however, and when it is complete, it will combine the composting of biological waste, the production of electricity by the combustion of biogas, mechanical separation of packaging material, the recycling of special materials and biofiltration, as well as the treatment of waste water. A kind of refuse stock market is being created here, in which waste is turned into valuable commodities. The sign on the truck proclaims a world of knowledge which keeps the Netherlands clean. One of these pieces of knowledge is the expertise applied in processing biological waste from garden and kitchen and the communal waste produced by villages, which are legally bound to collect organic waste separately and use it for composting. After five weeks, this waste has been transformed into first-class compost. AM Weister is the biggest producer of compost in the world. Dutch households generate 5 million metric tons of waste each year. Almost half of this is organic waste, and if it wasn't used for composting, it would simply be dumped or burnt. Piles of compost are, of course, much more attractive than piles of waste. But even these piles of waste wouldn't be so big if packaging materials were removed from them. The Dutch government has come to an agreement with the packaging manufacturers, according to which 60% of the material it produces will be separated by the year 2000. Both the environmental and economic benefits of separated waste collection are beyond doubt, and for this reason, the next option for waste management seems almost barbaric by comparison. To burn? More precisely, to incinerate. The capital of the Slovak Republic, Bratislava, produces more than 100,000 metric tons of household waste every year. Almost all of this waste ends up in the incinerator. Even though the under-pressure induction in the tanks prevents pungent odors from escaping into the immediate area, it cannot stop the loss of heat through the chimney. The incineration plant can only sell this heat in the winter months. The incineration process is analyzed in a laboratory, and the ash and cinders taken to the dump are monitored. Electrical filters prevent a large proportion of the solid particles from leaving the chimney, but they cannot stop the heat from being discharged into the open air. The chimney at the AVI incineration plant in Amsterdam does not have this problem. The heat that is generated at the plant is fully used all year round. 
765,000 metric tons of household and related industrial waste is brought here every year from Amsterdam and its environ. If the organic waste is separated out from this, then the combustion of each kilogram of waste yields 10.5 kilojoules of heat energy. The refuse incinerator dates from the last century, when the city of Amsterdam introduced a new special sanitation service. Two dumps were made available and when these were filled up, waste was either composted or separated. In this way, huge heaps of sorted waste were created. But as soon as there was no demand for this waste, it was considered a danger to health and the local atmosphere. For this reason, the first refuse incineration furnace began operating in 1918 and in 1969 it was decided that a new, modern incinerator should be built. The AVI incinerator in Amsterdam operates round the clock. In aggregates, heat energy is converted into electric power, which covers 17% of the city's needs. The aggregates, however, run at full speed only when the sun sets and leaves the world in darkness. The big city, though, has no need for the sun in the evening. It already has enough of its own little suns in the headlights of the cars and the trams. Artificial sunny smiles shine out from huge advertising boards. But the Dutch are not people given to hiding behind a wall of privacy, and so their efforts to clean up their environment are becoming more and more public. In the morning, Amsterdam is as clean as a whistle. The town's responsible citizens have put their household waste at the front of their homes, ready to be taken away by the...